Yeah, I know I said I was going to bed, and of course, uh, Dynamic Duo is not letting me. They, uh, they're pushing more stories in me and telling me that I didn't do story time. So, uh, tell you the truth, I can't remember, so I guess I gotta trust what they say. And so, uh, hence we're in story time. And, uh, they want me to tell you about a time where I, uh, started with a new company. It was called Venata Aviation. And what they did was, uh, they had bought a surplus of aircraft parts, Boeing 707s, 747s, and, uh, some DC stuff. And, uh, they had them shipped from the Europe over to the United States to get it all through customs so that when uh, airports in the United States needed a part, they didn't have to deal with customs. It was just we could ship it right directly to them. And sometimes those parts were so important we had to uh, take them right to the airport. And see, they were based in Vegas. And so we had this brand new building, a brand new and uh, they were just starting as a company and they'd put the shelves up and that was pretty much it. They had maybe 20 boxes worth of, or well, maybe more than that, maybe a hundred that had some parts in it. But they needed someone to run the warehouse to, uh, because they were gonna have these containers coming in and we were gonna have to inventory all the parts and put them in these boxes. And, uh, so I got that job and I started doing it and we had the shipping containers come in and they were packed plumb full of uh, aircraft parts and I'd have to pull them out and inventory them and then what box I put them in I had to make sure that that was recorded and uh, so I literally got to set up this warehouse all by myself right from the beginning, the get-go. And they didn't have just little parts. We had an entire engine come in on a special engine stand that I had to roll over into place and uh, put in this warehouse. And uh, I'll tell you what though, it was a pretty warehouse. I mean, it was, it was sharp. If you look back in the history of uh, the Las Vegas paper, you'll see the picture of the warehouse. I uh, I was the one that set that up. And they had money. It was a high dollar operator. It wasn't my coming to my paycheck, but I, I, was, I got paid pretty good. I was not complaining. But uh, we had cell phones. Very, very few people had cell phones in that time. Yes, the brick. That is exactly what I had. And I only had it, they had like three of them. And I only had it when I had to leave to go to the airport to drop off a part because they needed to communicate with me. And uh, I'll tell you what though, I was proud as hell carrying that cell phone. That thing was heavy, but... Uh, <coughs> <laughs> that was some cool tech. I remember times getting over there to the airport and walking in there and setting that thing on the counter with the part. And we end up talking about that damn cell phone. Then we do the part and they're like, wow, that thing's pretty neat. Can, can I try? Can, wow, that is, that's kind of heavy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you what, though, that, that warehouse and setting that up. That was some cool experience in organizing. And uh, we got, because I told you I worked on everything except the space shuttle. Well, I worked on planes too because we had a, a DC-8, I think it was, that uh, they had bought and brought over to Harbor Airport. I can't remember, Sky Harbor Airport or whatever it was. And we were stripping it down. We were going to take the parts off of it, the avionics, and... And uh, store them in, uh, uh, in 
take the parts off that there was a value. And the uh, problem was, I didn't have a license to do that. Well, they had a grandson, the family that ran the business, graduating the, uh, the school out in California that did have the license. And so he actually was the one that uh, did the disassembling of that DC-8. And uh, I was just there to help. The apprentice. I, I spent my whole damn life as an apprentice. That's, I'm cool with that because, you know, you learn. And, uh, boy, I tell you what, sometimes we'd have, uh, uh, one time we had a L-1011 that came into uh, Bakersfield, I think, in California. They had bought the plane. And they were going to sell it. Well, all the records have to go with the plane. Well, they were in a, a separate spot at our office, and I had to run it out there. Uh, they gave me a U-Haul and a big old U-Haul just to carry these 20-some boxes of the paperwork that belonged to that plane. And uh, drive it on out there to the plane and get it up in there and... Uh, I'll tell you what, though, man, see, that, that plane was set for cargo, and there was no uh, seats or anything in that. Dude, you could play tennis in that damn thing. It was so big. I never realized those things were that damn big. And uh, here I am walking around with my cell phone and big money and got a company credit card. I tell you what, I was high on the hog in those days. That was uh, that was a cool time in my life, and the tech that I seen, and the 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 operation, and because see the way it worked is they had this little uh, network, all the airports when they had a part they needed, they put out that they needed this part. Well, our salesman would look at that every day or, you know, every hour, whatever, whenever, as soon as it popped up. And he'd check and see if we had that. And if we had it, then he'd go out and make sure it's there on the shelf. And then uh, he'd give them a price. And if they bought it, it was my job to get it to them. Sometimes it was just as simple as putting it in a UPS box and sending it out. But most of the time, they don't want to wait on that. They got a plane going here at 5 o'clock. Get that damn thing over to the airport before <laughs> before that plane takes off. And that way they'll have that part as soon as that plane gets into that next airport. And uh, it was amazing how the network of that worked. And I really loved it when it was just me. But it quickly outgrew me. And uh, ended up having his son and his son's best friend and then the nephew of the owner. And uh, before you know it, it was all family except me. And uh, yeah, I kind of got shoved out the door because I wasn't part of the family. They say it was because of the mistakes, but the truth was is, uh, they really needed a guy that had a license to do the certifying of the parts, and he really needed to be the manager of the warehouse, not me. And so the writing was on the wall. It was funny how this operation come from Luxembourg. Yeah. They, uh, I'm not sure how they connected to it, but uh, the family was in Luxembourg before they came here. Um, McClone, or Mc Tommy McClone, or something like I can't remember what his name was. Um, but uh, that was another one of those jobs where I was really proud of what I did. And uh, like I said, the pictures in the I remember it being in the paper, and I clipped it. Of course, it's not around anymore, because I set that up. Everything in that picture was me. 
And you know something about their warehouses? See, in Vegas, it's different critters than there is up here in Iowa. Here we have mice. Down there, they got damn scorpions. Oh, damn, freaked me out. Because, see, I was new to the town myself, and I come in, and and I got this brand-new warehouse. I'm thinking, this is cool. And instead of having a mouse run around the damn warehouse, I got a scorpions. Them damn things are armed with a weapon. Not like mice. <laughs> I remember Clarence telling me, well, just step on them. I said, bullshit, I got to clean that thing up. No, give me a bucket. I'd scoop him out of little bucket and throw him out the back door. I ain't squishing him all over my clean floor. I cleaned that floor daily. I did. I had a special machine to clean it. And it was spot. You could eat off that floor in there. I mean, it was it was straight GI. But I was proud of that. It was one of those things where uh, I got to set up all by myself. I mean, they had the shelving and everything installed. All I had to do was fill the boxes and and uh, unpack all these containers. Boy, we did get containers. Hell, we had a forklift in one of them. It was nice to get that big forklift because it could pick up the seat containers. Pretty much before then, everything we had to do was right where they dropped. That's where we had to unload it, or I had to unload it. But like I said, it grew into a bigger family thing real quick. And uh, I didn't work there for long. But I got them started. I guess that's just the way it is. I had to move on. Boss man had other things for me to do. He uh, gave me my lessons I needed. and A few minutes with uh, some cool tech. And then went back and then went on to furniture. Yeah, designer furniture. That was hell. But... Uh, I was proud of that warehouse. And I'll be back with some more. I got more stories that uh, a little more entertaining. That one was more of just a, a pride. It's when you make a commitment to something and you see it through, it feels good. And uh, I guess that's uh, the knowledge to that one. It's uh, nice to be able to look at your, and it's permanently recorded on the other side. You'll be able to see everything I did in there. <laughs> I did see scorpions all over the damn place, though. Damn, those things were nasty. I'll be back.